niet tussen ze. Nee. So it's a crowded square here. A little a bit of a reminder there, Paul, of what's to come. The cobble roads in the marketplace here.
Als een vetje is hier. Hey Oscar, vetje. Vandaag maat. Als hier vlant, hij hoeft niet aan. Well, weather conditions uh, is a very, very good if you're watching Tour de Flans. A bit tough for the rides there. They started in very cold conditions. They're coming to the start of the Kleisberg climb here. All together, there's been the usual little flurry, but surprisingly today, nobody succeeding in breaking clear of the pack. A sign that the big favourites are watching one another. This is uh, a little bit earlier on before we actually go to the live pictures. This is the town of Bellingham, and it was voted the town of the Ronde this year, and that's why they've got all the bunting out and the Lion of Flanders, because not only, as you've mentioned, Phil, is this a very important bicycle race, this is probably the... We're dus bij de vier moedige koplopers. We hebben uh, Tom Bak, die van de kop afkomt, Renders die overneemt, en dan hebben we ook nog Jérôme en Velers. Dit is Jérôme, Vincent Jérôme en niet omgekeerd, dus Vincent is de voornaam. En dan hebben we Tom Velers, dat is de nog piepjonge Nederlander, een product van Rabobank. Maar die rijdt nu voor Skill Shimano. Hier zitten we bij Sven Renders van de Topsport Vlaanderen. Die er toch weer in slagen, de mannetjes van Topsport Vlaanderen en Walter Plankaart, om de wedstrijd enigszins te kleuren. Zoals ze dat ook dag na dag wisten te doen in de driedaagse van de Pannenkokzijde. Maar kijk eens, we zitten op de 132 kilometer van de aankomst. Dat wil zeggen dat we nu precies half koers zijn. En de voorsprong van de vier is een minuut 57. as was this man as well, the Belgian national champion, Stein de Volder, riding at the back. I think today his uh, race will be very much dominated by what the form of Tom Bonin is, because Bonin, to me, although he hasn't done a lot since the Tour of Norton Steve, but they have to allow for the fact that they may be brought to a complete standstill, and that then requires huge effort on the climb. Well, in fact, uh, Fabian Cancellara, for the aficionados, has got himself a 38-tooth chainring on the inside and a 25-tooth sprocket at the back, yeah. and that, again, is just in case you've got to start from dead stop, and that's a very useful gear, of course, for the steep Koppenberg. Absolutely. Well, look at the back here at the moment, Tom Vilas from the Skill Shimano team. And that's There's not the 57 that's seconds. Not, no way. And you see the rider getting through on the inside there, and there. Now, as, now they're halfway down the field, they start to slow for that bend, but these boys have got control of the head. Hincapi in third place again, there he is, experience showing here for Big George here, the Molenberg. And there's this, the back. <laughs> this is why you have to ride at the front, because these guys now are going to have to accelerate quite viciously to stay in contact, while the guys at the front have gone round at their own speed, they've started to ride. These men here now have lost themselves 30 to 40 seconds on the front runners because they didn't start the climb at the front. Could even be a separate peloton once over the top and a long chase to even get back on. They just hope now that they will rejoin. But some tough riding, George there, there's the traffic jam at the back again. Riders now 
having great difficulty and it's no good complaining but David Boucher is waving his arms asking them all to move along as if they weren't trying to do so and there's Eric Zabel and that's what happens when you get a puncture at the wrong time poor old Eric back there he was wearing that the black raincoat there Zabel at the back end Fabian Cancellara is just over there on the left hand side he doesn't want to show his uh, cards too early but he just wants to ride at the front and I noticed a little bit of cyclocross Zabel, yeah. professional here, just waiting for the uh, traffic to unfold in front of him, but that's an indication, Phil, that there's a lot of battling yet to do. Well, it's, a, it's a little bit surprising to see it quite in such a mess at this early stage of the race. Zabel just waiting for a run at the hill here, letting them all get on with it, and then he'll have a go. There's no point in starting and then having to walk again. So you, you've got to take your hat off to Eric. The last time he completed this race, he finished 11th in 2006 and he was fourth in 2005 when he tried desperately to win the race. Having won over 200 races, he's never won this one. Well, he is a star. He's a great bike rider and a fantastic personality as well. I think a little bit unfortunate for Zabel to have that flat tyre at the wrong place, but he's being phlegmatic about it. If he catches himself back into the race, fine, all well and good. He knows all about it. And look at the ways away, because meanwhile, back on the Molenberg, it's still total chaos, and imagine how far these riders are now behind. And the only reason you'll see it in the photographs is because our camera bike is stuck behind them as well. Well, I think the important thing is uh, you have to understand they started the Molenberg as a complete main field, and these guys, once they go over the top, will have lost themselves between a minute and a minute and 30 seconds in the space of only 483 kilometres. Uh, yes, that's right, and the rider there from uh, Barlow World, Marco uh, Cotti, being pushed along by anybody that will give him a helping hand. He just simply cannot get the bike going, and same too applies here to Sergei Lagutin, the rider we saw crash earlier on today. Yeah, I'd actually forgotten, uh, be in between these two sections of cobbled uh, climbs, that the Molenberg and the Wolvenberg fill is actually a very long cobblestone section of around about three kilometres, and that is the Kerker Gate, and that is going to be a very difficult next ten kilometres, three kilometres or two miles in length. Nice cobblestones, but you will see the main field accelerate over and again breaking into the lead of these men who actually again Phil has managed stretch to the bit. stretch up to around about a minute and 25 seconds. Yeah, and it's because the peloton aren't hunting the four leaders, they're just uh, replying to the challenge of the day, which is the countryside right now. These four boys working well together, they get the best shot at seeing where they're going, of course. We've still got Wagner in between, and I'm sure now that the ride at the back here, Tom Velas knows that his teammate is chasing, so he may not help that breakaway until his teammate joins. Well, there you can see a, a rider from uh, F. De Jure, Francaise De Jure, has dropped oh, back. This oh, is the panic the on the right-hand yeah. side, and you can see immediately, once uh, Ladanieu had seen the problem, even though Ladanieu, number 84, has been involved in an accident himself, he stayed in contact with the race, and he's trying to help his teammate back. One of the other riders uh, here, this is Johan Ofredo, who's dropped back to look after the chances filled on a day like this. You're probably looking at there a good 45 seconds. There is Philippe Gilbert. Now, he mustn't panic at a time like this. This, this is the time where you may well find yourself have an accident. He's got a number of teammates alongside him. They need to wait now for a nice open section of road to try and move him up to the front. Yeah, he's just got to live with this now for 3,000 metres because he won't make a lot of progress. He's come back on, though, that's very important. And he's uh, living through the best start of the season he's ever had in his career, Gilbert. Is it would, wouldn't normally say this is a race to suit Philly, but uh, when you're on great form, things can go very well. Well, he's uh, an interesting rider because uh, not only does he ride well in the, the Ardennese classics like Liège, Baston Liège and the Flèche Vallon, but he does enjoy these tough Flandrian races. Of course, he was the winner of the Het Volk. But this race, I think, is not something which is completely and utterly outside his ability. Oh, absolutely right. Lampe is still confident that the rider who wears number one, Alessandro Balan, is going to deliver at the finish today. He certainly loves the area of Belgium, and he's done well in this race. There's the Belgian flag flying now. No Belgian riders evident just for the moment, but there's plenty of them here, not least. <laughs> Looking out at the finish line, the sunshine is here, it's clear blue skies, but obviously out in the Flanders, those showers are coming through and making the cobblestones very damp, and I think these two guys, Phil, they've raised the white flag now, and I think they realise that it's pretty much all but over, they know what is happening in the main field, so I think it's time out. <laughs> Uh, 
cognizant of that fact, but of course, uh, if the legs decide enough is enough, enough is enough for these boys, continuing good tempo. <laughs> actually at the head of that peloton uh, just at the moment these two riders are now setting the pace there's the spur wheels and the spectators again Slide on the left hand side, the leaders of the race. It's now down to just two riders with the main field, the peloton on the left hand side, on the right hand side, with, with most of the main contenders there, all of them staying right up at the front end. section of cobblestones at the Kerke gate. A lot of concentration on those riders now. They'll all be feeling pretty pleased with themselves. Johan van Sommelen off to the right of our picture there. Pretty pleased with themselves. The fact they're controlling the head of the field and not having to combat uh, the nervous uh, centre of the peloton. And they're not going to give this position up very easily, I can tell you. Just caught a glimpse there. Uh...
60s that they must have been joking in the weather centre uh, but they were right the snow was coming and it's here and it's blowing over the Tour of Flanders here it'll only last a few minutes but they of course turns those cobblestones into a very treacherous surface indeed riders now have another little hazard to contend with see the massive crowd what other sporting event in the world draws crowds like this in weather like this uh, the only thing in the favor is it's a free show well I have to say it Obispo, it was dreadful, but the crowds are as big as they are today here in the Tour of Flanders, and that race, of course, grows in stature every year. Maximum 17.3% now, Paul, as we head on to the Wolfenberg. Yep, the Wolfenberger, only 645 uh, metres in length. It doesn't sound very much, does it? But when you realise you've got a 17% maximum for an average of an 8... That was elusive. himself of course now he's delighted when others do the same <laughs> as we now well, see. I have to tell you I actually used to enjoy <laughs> the elder quite a lot I like the battle to get into the bottom of the the climb because the important thing about these climbs is if you can get into the So Villers, Renders, Vincent and Tom Back are all back together again. Chance to use our caption again, which uh, the caption operator had generated a while ago. Probably thought for the last time. Into Odenard. This is the town square in Odenard. A very nice town square. Very much reminiscent of a real typical Flandrian scene. And made more typical. Sony Duval is down. Astana sat on the roadside. And the rider from Quickstep has gone down as well. Just looking there, the rider from uh, Credit yeah, Agricole, Angu, Jimmy Angouvan went down quite hard. There's a rider from Ouch. Quick Step. Now that doesn't look too Unlucky good. Unlucky for some, Stephen de Jong. That's number 13. Ball, that. yeah. Yes, very sad. Yeah, look, so this Stephen de Jong, uh, we've followed his career for a long time since we watched him racing in Australia, and it's sad to see somebody go down. Quite makes it five in the lead. And the final composition by Robert Wagner as he gets up. We've now got five riders uh, in the lead. It might all happen. A little bit too late on because that crash will inspire some chases. But five for the moment and two rides from Skill Shimano. So they're warranting their wild card F4%, but it's 12% at the bottom and it's 1600 metres of cobblestones. And it's narrow and it's uh, high hedges around the side of it. There is a coffee shop on the top for those who'd wish to stop and call an end to the day, but I think most of them will continue on as they still try to all come back together. Well, there's the catch, and we, uh, since uh, the early part of the day, for the first time, are looking at what the Italians would call a Gruppo Compacto. Well, they chased so hard over those last few kilometres that the boys up front really didn't have much of an option there. As we've got big Johan van Sommen, those long, lanky legs of his. He's a driver, he really is. Well, there you go. Uh, they've just said it in French now, uh, Regroupement Général. And now is when the General Van Sommeren on the front here is starting to take over. There you can see the big rider from Team Quickstep is looking after uh, his big teammate, Tom Bonin. That was Herr Stegemans in the blue jersey. On the right-hand side is Bonin. Now this is almost Phil oh, it's resplendent a of a sprint finish. <laughs> just look at it. It's a very... Stones, although the climb itself is 2.2 kilometres in length, the steepest part, Phil, is right here at 11.6%. And this is where the race normally splits up for the first time. And once they go over the summit of this climb in four kilometres, they got another nasty climb called the Padestal. Which is why they'll keep the pressure on. We're already hearing calls from the race cars behind that riders are stopping at the rear of the peloton. We may not see pictures.
advantage of that but the riders on the front now are tapping out the rhythm and this is already beginning to split the field it looks like we've got Fletcher in second place for Rabobank well we talked at the start about the weather conditions at the start the weather was pretty fine at the finish here there is no rain on the ground but out on the course as you can see it's raining intermittently there's a bit of snow coming down now and again there are hailstones and that is battering onto the riders bodies and their legs and thighs and you can see the wind rippling in the flags of Flanders there this is going to be a tough test this is making the race which is a tough race to start with even more difficult well, Team High Road have got control of the breakaway and at the head of the peloton just behind. Hincapi has held a very good position. They'll take a lot of confidence in the team riding from that. This, Just take a look at those cobblestones now because this is how difficult they are at this stage of the race. I think it's Vassfall who is there um, for the Gerlsteiner team. And there's the steep part at the moment. Well, there's a little cafe that Phil always talks about over on the left-hand side there, but there's not very many people here stopping for a little cup of coffee here this afternoon. Now, this, to me, Phil, is always the toughest part here of the old Quaramont because this is the town of Quaramont and it now drags up in a false flat for about 1.2 kilometres. What makes it more difficult is not really the gradient, it's the fact that you've got a very nasty wind battering across the road, making it difficult for the riders. Looks like Thomas Weick is here on the front here for Team Astana, not selected yet for the Tour de France, and they're hoping to allow their legs to do the talking over the next few months and try and persuade the organisation ASO to let them into the race with the defending champion Alberto Contador and the defending third-place finisher Levi Leipheimer. Well, this is the tempo we expected on the Quaramont, and this is where it is starting to split up. It's only a four-star, the hills are judged one to five stars, by the way, the Muir, the wall at Kappel Muir, the church wall, that gets five stars. Hill number 16, the last climb, the Bosberg, uh, gets four stars, probably because it's a, a strategic position near the end. But you're looking out along what are most certainly now the bleak fields of Flanders here as the Tour of Flanders is pulled out into a long straight line. Every man for himself, even if they are riding shoulder to shoulder, as they try to control this race. They came to the foot of the climb altogether. Riding up at the front there in second position is Tom Bonin, I can see, followed by Leif Hoster. There's the acceleration on the older Quaramont and the pressure coming down from Team Astana. Johan Brunil, Phil, said to me yesterday, no pressure on my squad here this afternoon. All we're going to do is ride a race to enjoy it. Yeah. to make this a five-man leading group with Johan van Sommeren as well. So Leif Hoster has got himself a little bit of friends there. And as you can see, the main field scrambling to stay in contact. Well, I think it's reasonable to say now that the Tour de Flanders has taken a couple of hours, but now it has really begun. And that is a group now led by Johan van Sommeren here, trying to organise something special. Well, we expected... And 
And here we are on the next climb of the day now. This is the four-star Paterberg with that steep 20% gradient right in the middle. The group is still clear from the old Qualamont, but let's face it, Paul, it is still a very, very big group here. But Johan van Sommeren driving on the front, Bonen on the right. We are 75 kilometres to go to the finish, and you're already looking at the heads of state. Bonen, as you've said, is there on the right-hand side. There is Alessandro Balin in the pink. There is George Hincapie in the white jersey and the white helmet. Life Hoster is over to the left-hand side. There, in fact, in the, in the second row as well, is Fabian Cancellara. The big boys are showing their faces at the front with two hours of racing still to go. But they've no choice because if you lose position, you lose the race. You can't shadow box in the Tour of Flanders. There is the pack now, slowly getting strength from behind. The riders in the far distance still recovering from the previous climb, the old Paramount. Uh, we've seen one CS rider go over into a ditch, and we're not sure who he was. We think it was Lars ba uh, Lars, uh, Lars back. Yeah, Lars back who went over there, out of the race. But very impressive so far, Tom Bonham sitting at the front here. Now he's stamping his authority on this climb as well as he comes up towards the summit. It's not very long, the climb. It was pretty steep. So first man out is Tom Bonan, looking for three, remember, to join the greats of our time in the Tour de Flanders. Well, that's the way to do it, to dominate the climb. There's his teammate going through, the champion of Belgium, Stein de Volder. The uh, difficult thing about where we are at the moment, Phil, is in just six kilometres from the summit of this climb, they've got to get to the summit of the Koppenberg. Again, not a very long climb, just 600 metres. It doesn't sound very much when you say it quickly, but this is a steep climb coming up next because that is 22% the gradient at its maximum part. And all about 50 riders are on the back heels here, just trying to repair damage rather than take part in the race, which is going to make it difficult for them. The Koppenberg is a five-star climb. As you say, Paul, it's one of the toughest. It's well known in the Tour de Flanders as the field here continues to rattle over the Paterberg. Well, it's a question of survival now. It's a question of trying to get yourself back into the race once you've been uh, tailed off the back on a climb like the old quadras. So they've got to help us out at around about 14 places along the race route today. Not in the first 150 kilometres, but in this last 100 kilometres of racing. And it's very essay. It looks as though Stein de Vol here tried to plug in his race radio, his earpiece there. He's probably covered in mud by now, I would think. He's not too sure he's receiving anyway. Tom Bonin riding brilliantly, dead centre of the road here, and that's a big position for him to be in. Fletcher just off to the right, he's here too. I think Gusev is also here, so some big names in this group as they head up towards the next challenge of the day. The rest of this race. Well, just to tell you about the Koppenberg, it's only 600 metres long, but it's a 22% the maximum gradient, 11.6% is the average, and it is all cobblestones. It's actually been relayed over recent years because it was coming much too dangerous to use, but it is a phenomenal climb. It's a dangerous climb, and a lot of riders putting very low gears on 25 tooth sprocket for some of the riders. Tom Bonin is there on the front, followed by Juan Antonio Fletcher. There is Leif Hoster, Hincap, he's not far away either. Stein de Volder, the champion of Belgium. Where else should you be when your country's national champion is right on the front on this most revered climb of the Tour of Flanders? Tom Bonin on the right there is keeping in the saddle. You've got to stay in the saddle. If you get out of the saddle, you lose control of your bike, you know, finish up leaning against the wall, which on this occasion is grass. Looking down the group here now as well, we know Alessandro Balan last year. with 
him as the world champion, ex-world champion, albeit stamps out a superb rhythm. His face here, one of contentment, I think, one of concentration. Look at the face of Stein of Alder. He's grimacing under the pressure. He has to stay there, though, because he's a teammate of the man who's shown that sign of form there. He's the big teammate of Tom Bonham, followed there by Fletcher. Next along there is uh, Fabian Cancellara, then Philippe Gilbert, then Leif Hoster then Alessandro Balan, all of the big names moving to the front. Little split forming as they come up towards the top of the Koppenberg now. Oh, and that was a very nasty fall indeed. He clipped the right hand curb there and he tore his wheel to shreds. And I'm, it's a Sony Duval rider. I don't think, but he could have been Adlum and he was waiting for help. Uh, but now he needs a complete new bike if he's continuing. Back to the two leaders. Well, this is, uh, Phil, as we said a little earlier, going to be a monumental, legendary day, I feel, here this afternoon. It is. Uh, you know, there has been so many incidents so far, and we are certainly an awful long way to go to the finish. We're now looking at this very difficult climb here. This is a 15.8% maximum. This is the Tienberg, it's a 530 metres long, and it's uh, an average grade of 6.6%. But again, this is a very famous climb in the Ronde van Vlaanderen. Sebastian Langeveld, the Brabo Bank, trying to soften the field up, I feel, in favour of uh, Juan Antonio Fletcher. But uh, Langeveld has been at the front all day today, dictating a first. Let's take a look down in amongst the folks here. The sight is the one in the coloured jerseys, by the way, as they get between a huge crowd here on the Stein Beek. Dries. This is actually we move forward. We went over the stake break Dries pretty rapidly. This, in fact, is the Tienberg. This is Langeveld on the front. As we look back there, we can see it's all starting to come back. Cup holder has gone. This is Stein de Volde here now, just trying to bring a little bit of semblance of common sense to this race. There's still a long way to go. Well, the Grand National, the famous horse race in Great Britain, was held yesterday. That's over fence. It's said to be the toughest horse race. Be alert though, you have to stay near the front, make sure that you avoid any ill luck. We well, don't know for the moment because Race Radio is not telling us what the position in the race is of Leif Hoster. He had a mechanical incident, and I tell you one thing, I think he'll be having a very hard chase to pull himself back into a chance of winning the Ronde van Vlaanderen after three second places. Well, it looks like it's time for a break now because these riders have all. Come on, come 
nu niet hoog. Men of this year's Tour de Flanders are still right there on the front. And as you're looking down now on the, uh, well, I would say, Paul, it's around about, still about 30, 35 riders. The field, the last time check we got was around about 50 seconds. Nobody really knows, let's face it, uh, there's no timekeepers between the peloton and the chase, so they're working on landmarks to try and work out the, the gaps and tell the managers uh, who and what is happening. Um, they have not on any occasion given us a list of riders in this breakaway, uh, so we don't know, in fact... Uh, Hammer down. Pretty sure that the cockatiest rider there, Paul, is Nick Williams, and uh, looking very useful. He's a man for this sort of a race. Uh, but looking here at the front now, Stein de Vol has ridden superbly this week, this week or today rather. He's been second, first wheel all the time, trying to keep Tom Bowen away from the front of the action. That's not easy in itself because Tom. Uh, he's still full of enthusiasm, he knows he's hurting the field, but he's got to take into account that they're still here, and there's still a long way to go, and there are still a lot of climbs to come. Big climbs, nasty climbs that will come down towards the end, uh, climbs like at the Berendries. For me, the, the most uh, important thing now is will be once we get down towards the end and uh, we go over the cap. A number of riders in here for Team Rabobank, they're looking after Juan Antonio Fletcher, who's riding there in fourth position. I have seen George Hincapi in this leading group, but again, he's riding very... Few of them in here. The last Frenchman of any note to get even a smell at the front uh, was in fact uh, Frédéric Guédon when he finished sixth in 2003. That's the best place by a Frenchman since that date. Well, uh, that's never really been a great race for the French, apart from uh, a young man by the name of Jackie Du. in there and that's always bad for the morale well and the trouble is he was right with the leading group uh, and the poor old uh, Shimano Spurs man there is working overtime he's on a motorbike you know there's only so many wheels you can carry of course and so first to put Cheer of Oscar Freire, he's been away for about 10 kilometers, a maximum lead of 40 seconds. He's put back into the head of the peloton, which currently is about 25 riders strong, with a group of 50, including Leif Hoster, trying to bridge the gap. They were almost on two kilometers ago, and it's gone out to about 15 seconds again. Well, they haven't yet been able to make the junction because of the repetitive nature of all of these climbs. We're now here comfortably on the Leiberg, 950 meters, 13.8 
percent at the maximum for an average of 4.2 percent and still stain de volder was a man who last year was one of the stalwarts of team discovery channel snapped up immediately by team quickstep and he's actually riding away but i'm sure of his team leader tom bonan Frederic Guédon is their rider coming in. No, it's not. In fact, it's Philippe Gilbert has seen this as a serious gap and he realises that was a nice tactical move by Tom Bone and there. Let the gap go and let everybody else come up with the pace making. Look at the face here of second place rider Philippe Gilbert and I think you can see just how difficult so far the race has been. We're looking at the top of this climb at 48 kilometres to go. That's still 30 miles of racing for Devolda and Philippe Gilbert. Right. Mate, and the pressure was coming down to it, and he was having to take the responsibility of bridging that last 10 or 15 seconds on his own. Gilbert now, riding now, finally filled with a lot of maturity. The first time I ever saw him was way down in South Australia in what uh, was then the Jacobs Creek Tour Down Under. He climbed up to get himself a stage victory ahead of his teammate, Baden. Antonio Fletcher, George Hincapie, Carsten Kruen. And Stein de Valde is now assessing whether he's going to drive this or wait. And it wouldn't surprise me, Paul, if he stops and shuts down. He's decided to wait, but there's another rider coming across the gap there, sort of disguised there by the motorbike, Phil, for this leading group. The rider in there is Nick Noyens there, number 65. And just sitting on the back, a rider from Lamprey, I don't know very much at all about that, is Simon Spilak. Spilak joins the leaders here, a new professional actually turned pro this year, if memory serves me right, and uh, we're looking now at the leaders here, they are forming nine riders at the front, Frederick Guedon, Stein de Volder, Langevelt. You can see we're now on the next climb of the day, and this is the climb of the Berndries, and there's the move by Tom Bonin, he doesn't want anybody going clear. Immediately chased there, Phil, by Fabian Cancellara of Team CSC. It had to be here, he's waiting for the road to go up to try and bridge the gap. It's going to all be shut down with another show of absolute powerhouse riding by the former world champion Tom Bonham. Steepest part of this course is 12.3%, it's not an absolute backbreaker, three stars, but look at the strength of Bowen. But what it indicates is there are a lot of riders who are very tired in this crew because nobody's responded. When you see Tom Boonen get out of the saddle, you have to respond if you've got anything. The only men capable of responding were Alessandro Balan there, just behind him, and Cancellara looks to me as if he may be cracking. Well, this is another crucial moment in the race here, as they now try to bridge the gap. If they can get 12 riders cleared, it might well be the beginning of the end for the rest of the race. Still working at the front here, the leader of the race, which is Langevelt, trying to once again to split up this race. Well, Langevelt working for the rest of the team, but I tell you one thing, uh, Fabian Cancellara was comes. put into a little bit of difficulty there. He was unable to follow that acceleration. Just a little bit further up, you can see Tom Bonin, and he has now, just as we go over the top, of the Berendries joined the leading group. However, Fabian Cancellara had a little bit of difficulty there, but he should, Phil, recover over the top to join in a couple of minutes' time. The Astana rider, by the way, who's gone across here, but this really is starting to turn out into the heads of state, this leading group, and we may well have finally seen the first big selection. And I don't know if you noticed that, Paul, but Philippe Gilbert is here as well right now, has also joined the leaders, so Stein de Volder is up and... Ahead of him is Langevelt. Surely there's nobody else going to get across. The big boys who had the strength realised this was the big move. Carsten Kroon now is the man starting to come across the gap here. He's seen the, the dangerous move now. Once you get so many big heads of state, uh, it's a slight chance for the, the lieutenants to take advantage, and that is what is happening here, because uh, somebody before the start today said to me, you know, Fabian Cancellara is going to be such a marked man that you better watch out for Carsten Kroon because he may well take advantage with his tactical knowledge of the fact that his team captain is well marked. Well, there's been no respite whatsoever. We race back underneath the uh, sun again as the riders get onto drier roads and look at this man turn the gas on. Fourth man to come across, though, is George Hincapie using all of his tactical knowledge here this afternoon. He's looking for these moves, he's riding sensibly. Once he sees the split coming, he allows it to develop slightly and he accelerates across, but somebody else has seen the move too because there's man number five. But Sebastian Langevelt, at 23 years of age, is hurting some of the most famous names in world cycling just now as they continue to try. Now Balan has come over as well. 
so the big names are coming back into the frame one by one but every time they think they've made the decisive move it splits again and there's big gaps this time this is a good gap and I'm surprised that Tom Boonen is not moving across these gaps he's being caught out every time he's the man who's shown the most power on the climbs and that maybe is a big mistake he's shown everybody just how good he is Nick Noyens now on the front there and Tom Boonen getting rid of his uh, extra shirt there getting himself ready to start racing there's Philippe Gilbert in the white jersey Juan Antonio Fletcher in the orange they're going to have to organize themselves so because that is I think looking like a very interesting five-man group now will the shadow back boxing start whereby they all look at each other and say but it's your turn no it's not it's your turn the arguments start and the gap opens up George Hincap he's been riding very sharp today been really riding with superb attention that's Carsten Crew, the CSC rider who's got across to the leader here, just sitting at the back. A bone has allowed some of the most dangerous riders in the race to go clear, and the group is not coming back as we pull back down the climb here to the start of the climb of the Volkbog. There they are, look, and the reaction is not there. Nick Noyens on the front, and just uh, no real chase here. Pizzato joined this group, hasn't gone forward. I think he has gone forward. He has gone forward. We're uh, at the finish line here, looking down on a, a damp road, although the rain has, in fact, uh, disappeared and the clouds are starting to raise a bit. But these guys have been through all kinds of weather conditions here this afternoon. I think uh, top of the Volkenberg, and very shortly, and I'm working out at, at around about uh, six kilometres, they've got the famous climb of Tunbos, followed by the Ekemolen, the Eke windmill climb. Hincapi riding sensibly, there he is at the front there in his white jersey of Team High Road, a new team structure for him. They decided to wait and see how it develops. And there's the team time trial of motorcycles behind. They also, uh, there's no team cars here noticeably, so the gap has been emptied by the teams. Well, they've got everybody out of the gap because it's below that 30-second mark, and I think Hincapi riding sensibly. He knows how to ride tactically for success in a bright, a bright race like this. And just having a look there, Phil, I make that around about 17 seconds, so it is actually turning to the advantage of this group of chasers. The five men they are chasing, I think, are waiting. Down from the helicopter, we are approaching the Eichermolen, hill number 15, and they are about to be caught here. There they are. And it's been Liqui Gas doing all of the chasing with a little bit of assistance from Kofidis. And we're off again. As he saw them come up, Stein de Volder has launched an attack on the Eichermolen. Three climbs to go. And he, he's the man to chase again. And again, he's taking all of the pressure off Tom Bonin. Well, as they say in Flemish, a new Arnvalve and Stein de Volder. Now, what he's trying to do here is completely take the pressure off his own teammate. And if all the big champions start to look at each other, He's got a chance of getting himself a surprise victory here this afternoon. He sat on that group for a little bit of time, Phil, to get himself a little bit of rest and recuperation. Felt this was the right opportune mine. And let's not forget, we're looking at 10 kilometres, six miles to go to the Mur de Grammont. Everybody's thinking about the Mur and yep. wanting to be economic with their energy. He's not. He's not got much left. Now, this is an interesting move because he might be set up here. He might be left to fry because nobody has countered the move. So he's got a chance to go alone. And that's another thing for them to ponder on now because are they going to let the champion of Belgium win the Tour de Flanders, who they think is working for Tom Bonin, the former world champion? As Langeveld here now goes back towards the group, Stein de Volder continues to ride a brilliant ronde. Well, as they say in Flemish, this man is a sterke moniker, a strong man, a beast of a man to take the responsibility of a move like that. And as you can see, silence lot and now they have to chase. This is the big battle of the Belgian teams in the Belgian race, the Ronde van Vlaanderen. And silence Lotto have to try and pull it all back together. Looks like a response there coming from Pipo Pozzato, who's moved up to the front. He's seen how dangerous that is. Well, that was Greg van Avermaet of the Silence Lotto team there. He's another youngster with a great future, trying to do something uh, to bring them back together in favour of Leif Hoster. Big Tom has got to the front, free wheels, blocks out the sunlight, and the nose that his teammate and champion of his nation is up front. It's a good feeling right now. It's a great feeling, uh, just six miles of 20 seconds between Stein de Volde, the small group of four riders in the middle, and the main field behind. It's all going to come together, I think. Tombak is the man who's got into this leading group as well. He really used to ride for Laradut alongside Paul Sherwin. The gaps officially are 18 seconds, Stein de Volde to the chase group, uh, we've just seen, and then 28 seconds to the next group. Uh, last time we saw them, there were nine, but there might be more by now. Uh, De Volder, though, looks as though he's going to be first onto the wall. There's the chapel, dead centre in your picture. The church at the top, the Kapelmuir, the uh, Chapel Hill. 
and it looks as though Steindewald, I wonder how many times he's raced to Gerards Bergen or even trained through here. He's a man of flaws. Oh, no change at the moment. We've got one leader, four chases, and then Hinkapi in that bunch there. That's the situation. They snap back. Hushoft, Chavanel, Quincy Arto, Tom back to the mood itself. 19.8% is the maximum gradient. It says 475 metres, but it's a lot longer than that from Herath Bergen in the bottom to Kappel Muir in the top. This is a very, very cruel climb here, and the uh, pictures are sprinkled over the 100 years. Coming up, Paul, that's most unusual. Now, meanwhile, at the front, the second kick of the climb. Well, it seems like uh, Chavanel has slipped to the back end of this group, but this is a great move here. He's come first onto this massive climb of the Muir de Gramont, the wall of Herald's Bergen. You can see how difficult the climb is, but he's still got the power, he's still got the punch in those pedals, and he still does not have that group behind him. He could survive, and that would be a monumental ride. I've never seen De Volder ride like this. All day long, I've been convinced he's been softening the field up for Tom Bonin to bite back at the finish. But this man is now committed here, and Bonin won't chase him down. He'd be delighted if Stein De Volder won this race. This is the narrow, horrible little section, the section where Paul Sherwin used to walk in the days of the Tour of Flanders, but it normally reduces men to mortals here. And look at Juan Antonio Fletcher. He's seen his team work for him all day, but at the end of everything, it comes down to the leader to do it himself. Coming after him there is Nick Noyens, there is Tom Bowden, Alessandro Balan, Fabian Cancellara, all of the big names. Further is Pippo Pozzato coming up to the front as well. of the day the Bosberg and it's a four-star climb and it's not so severe but it's where it's placed on the course that makes it so vital to the format Sandro Balan and this is the man they all want to catch they're coming now out of Herald's Bergen and this is De Volder now just sitting up I think he was looking for a bottle he was looking for some assistance but he's got to keep himself in that individual time trial <laughs> Uh, Fletcher says, all right, you've chased me down, come and help me chase this man down. Bonin says, no, I won't because it's my teammate in front, it's Stein of Volder. You want to win this bike race, guys, you've got to pull back my teammate into the fold. I'm just going to sit here nice and pretty. If you pull him back, then I'm going to hit you hard. Well, this is a now every man for himself here, as if it wasn't a few moments ago. And, uh... No, they aren't making any impression. We're still looking at 14 seconds, the difference between Stein de Volder and that group of riders behind. But the more they mess about, the more the advantage is going to turn towards the champion. There's a group of 10 or 15, it doesn't matter because Bonin has still got the sprint to win this race. Well, you saw some of the names, here they are, Gregory Rast is the rider on the far right for Astana there. 
Uh, the last year's winner riding a two superb defensive his title as he leads them through the streets here. Alessandro Balan is flying the flag again for an Italian in the Tour of Flanders. And uh, Nick Noyant is sitting in there just behind him. He was working with Chavanel, but what a great second gun he's turning out to be. There is Stein de Vol, the race radio just crackled to give him a 19 second advantage. There is no organisation in this chasing group, but I'm sure that's because of the fact sitting on the back of it is big Tom Bonham, because they know if they work too hard to pull back Stein de Volder, he's going to win this bike race for this team. And he doesn't want to chase because he'd love to see his teammate win while he's wearing the jersey of the champion of Belgium. What a glory that would be. We are just under the... Relax. Volder, well, he's not quite as young as Langevelder, but he's certainly a star today. And there's the climb now up through the woods here. It's a good road surface, and once we're over the top, it's all man for himself as they race towards the finish. Well, it's just... seconds if he's got 20 or 25 seconds at the top of this climb of the Bosberg he's got a very good chance of going down towards the finish line as the winner wearing the resplendent jersey of champion of Belgium on his shoulders but it's still a tall order he's being chased in second place here by Langeveld but there are a lot of big names in that group with Tom Bone and Phil and I think they may well get themselves organized over the summit here of the Bosberg well, there he is, and there is the distance, and the group more or less together behind here now as he comes up towards the top of the climb. Is he just still a carrot for Bonan to just come by and win the race, or is he actually going for gold himself? It's up to the race behind. They are the only ones with the answer now. As Sebastian Langevelder, another faithful teammate all day, still dictating affairs in second. Well, isn't it funny how the camera does tell a few lies there? It looked as if he was riding very easily across the gap, but he's only halved it because as he rides off the cobblestones, he's looking for 10 seconds to find the man at the front of this race. channel rider from last year is now trying to win himself I would say his biggest ever victory after of course the Belgian national championships but sometimes the Belgians regard the Tour of Flanders as even bigger than the championship of their own country or the championship of the world because it is their own personal world championships he's got 10 seconds Forty seconds now, which is not very much, is it? We're still a little way to ride down to the finish. devolder has got 18 seconds over Sebastian Langefeld. There he is, 28 seconds over the group containing Tom Bonan and last year's winner Alessandro Balan, and 40 seconds to what is left of the Tour of Flanders. There is uh, Fabian Cancellara. He's winning the group there with, of course, Tom Bonan. Fletcher now was looking to get himself a podium position. Now's the moment where they're all starting to play that little tactical game. Will I chase? Should I chase? I'm losing the Tour of Flanders, and if they don't get the... And he's done a good move to get himself back into this bike race after all of the bad luck that he's had. Well, Cancellara, having thought he was dropped, in fact, they must have been saying in Flemish he was catching that group. He's obviously joined it, and also Leif Hoster should be there. We'll wait for confirmation when we see... the gap and have joined that chasing group there's certainly more riders there than were there before one rider out in front 10 kilometers to go six miles from the finish around about uh, 12 to 13 minutes to race that's all Stein de Volder that stands between him and the greatest moment of his life well we're still looking at 10 to 12 seconds at disadvantage for the rider in second position there and it is around about 25 seconds
down to the flat part of the course and the running towards the final kilometre. But I've never seen Fletcher pull his body apart like that. He realises he's on the edge of something very famous indeed for a Spanish rider. They're pulling out now the neutral service vehicle as we pull back. We're looking for five seconds here for Juan Antonio Fletcher. He's going to catch him before the end. And then what's going to happen? Well, it's happened. The Stein de Volder, uh, sorry, I was thinking I left Hoster. It's happened to Leif Hoster before being caught in sight of the line. So he knows what it's like to finish second. He's got himself into that chase group behind, but it may not be good enough now. I think that was four kilometres to go to the finish here. At just four kilometres, two and a half miles to the line for Stein de Volder. He really has been a superb man at this race. No way is he a fortunate winner. He has led over most of the climbs today. He's looking five and a half minutes of effort left down towards the finish line. This is the false flat on the outskirts of Ninova and Merbeke. And there, this man is looking at the carrot in front of the donkey. The carrot on this occasion is Stein de Volder, the national champion of Belgium, who is hoping to win this bike race here this afternoon. Afternoon, but look at Fletcher, look at his body, he's pulling himself any which way he can, he's a contortionist trying to get as much power out of that body as possible. Well, let's remember that Stein de Volder last year won the Tour of Austria by virtue of his great time trialling skills on stage seven. This year, he won the Tour of the Algarve, same reason, his time trialling skills on stage number four. Now he's having to time trial to take out the greatest classic of them all. Nick Noyens is coming across the gap now as well for Kofidis, so we've got in the first three places on the road, three individual riders. There's Noyens, number 65 in the and red shorts of Team Kofidis. We are now looking at just three kilometres left to go to the finish. Noyens looks over his shoulder. This is so terribly desperate for the man that I think we all want to win now, Stein de Volder, because he's been at the front of this bike race over all of the big climbs. He's worked like a Trojan for his team leader, Tom Bonin, and now he may well lose it in the final thousand yards. Nick Noyens, who knows what it's like to break the top ten, he was seventh in this race one year ago, Fletcher's seen him coming, this will be something of a light relief for Juan Antonio, because he could do with a break right now, because look up the road, and Stein de Volda is still riding them off his wheel and out of sight, the kilometres are ticking off here, soon it'll be the right turn, then he will see the finish, and then he will know what it's like as a champion of Belgium to win the Tour de Flanders, but it's not over yet, look at that blanket finish. You've got the whole of the race there, Phil, in about 20 seconds. These are the two chasers now, and a little bit of assistance coming from Juan Antonio Fletcher. Nick Noyens, a Belgian, is chasing down a Belgian. That's always a, a difficult thing in the press well, the next day, but it's all about winning this bike race. At this stage of the game, it's nothing to do with what country you come from at two kilometres to go. It's about getting across the line and winning. It doesn't matter where you're from. Under the two-kilometre banner, another huge crowd here. Cheer, another huge cheer, rather, from the crowd. Two kilometres inside, uh, two miles to go. What, just over one mile, in fact. The tandem now is a spanish Benel belgium tandem. And if they don't get up there in the next thousand metres, they're racing for second place. I don't think they'll close it now. It's 14 seconds officially to the two chasers there who are looking a little bit raggedy. And this man, we've said a number of times, is a very good individual time trialist. It's 24 seconds back to the group containing Tom Bonin. Every time he puts his head down, he gets himself into that time trialing position. He makes himself a little bit more aero. His body must be going through turmoil at the moment. But if he can get to that finishing course, in first place he knows he's got this in the bag and what a great victory for a Flandrian well the way these boys are looking over the shoulders as they still try to finish it off here they are racing for second place and worried about the chase from behind I think Stein de Volder has pulled off the big coup today He's ridden this race in favour of Bonin and he's going to finish it off for himself. Absolutely superb demonstration. Oops, nearly overshot that one. Well, he's getting a little bit nervous. That's something that he's been waiting for. He looks over his shoulder. He allows himself the uh, advantage to look back and see what the gap is. One kilometre to go and he's looking with a 10 second advantage. He's not going to be able to enjoy this coming up the finishing straight because he's going to have to go and take it all the way to the line. Here are the chasers. Fletcher now looks over his shoulders too to see Nick Noyens a little bit further back. They know the group are there. This is a desperate struggle, but I think he's finally got this one in the bag. Well, he's not the first champion of Belgium to cross the line wearing the national champion's jersey, but he certainly is going to be very special here. He's now 26, uh, 27 years of age, 28 years of age now, Stein de Volder. His birthday coming in August this year, just after the end of the Olympic Games in Beijing. 
where I'm sure he'll be going after a demonstration like this on a one-day race. He's never before approached a victory in a one-day classic race, and now he's approaching the finishing line as the winner of an absolute vintage edition of the Ronde van Flandern. He deserves it. He certainly deserves this, and there you can see the two chasers. Now he can look over his shoulder. He knows he's got it. That's the moment of victory. That's the moment of great enjoyment. Well, Stein de Volde, as champion, takes the victory today. He doesn't believe it. He never raced for the win today. It came his way three hills out, and he never looked back. There's the big crowd have cheered him all the way home, and a huge, huge grin on all of their faces. And Stein de Volde crosses the line. The spin for second place here. Well, Juan Antonio Fletcher will get third behind Nick Noyens, but that's the best finish ever by a Spanish cyclist in the history of this event. But that's the way the race has been today. And it's finished off in a very tight sprint there. And George Hincapi, with a smile on his face, has finished alongside Alessandro Balan. But I noticed there, Tom Bonham was very happy to sit up and celebrate there. Great win for Patrick Lefebvre in there with his team as well, because tactically they rode a superb race here this afternoon. This man rode with sheer courage, though, Stein de Volder over those final few kilometres. I'll tell you one thing, Phil, tomorrow morning he's going to have a sore body. Well, here we can see the, the winner of the day getting his hat on for the uh, interview. And uh, we actually haven't got any. Stein de Volder, hoofdschudd, je gelooft het nog altijd niet. Je hebt de Ronde van Vlaanderen gewonnen en op welke manier? Ik kan het gewoon niet geloven. I can't believe that I've won this. Ik heb, ik heb er gewoon geen woorden voor. Uh, kan, uh, het zal nog een tijdje duren voor ik, uh, voor ik echt besef dat, dat ik de Ronde van Vlaanderen gewonnen heb, denk ik. Je zat in een verloren ontsnapping, dan worden jullie ingerekend met dat vijftal. En dan ga je, en het is nog bijzonder ver. Ja, uh, ik zat te wachten. Uh, Wilfried Peters zei constant, uh, niet rijden, niet rijden. Uh, Tom kwam achter en uh, uh, kwam er op, uh, op een ideaal moment uh, bij voor mij. En, uh, ik wist dat uh, na, na de Eikenmolen uh, uh, wind mee was. Tot, uh, tot, uh, tot aan uh, 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 was weg, zeg maar. Uh, 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 um, ik was heel goed. Uh, really good. Ik had heel goede benen. Uh, 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 dat was gewoon. Uh, mijn tijdrit tot aan de aankomst, maar na het bos was het echt uh, heel like zwaar, uh, wind op kop uh, constant en ik uh, um, denk dat ik nog nooit in mijn leven zo, zo hard heb afgezien of die, dat stuk na de bosberg tot, uh, tot aan de aankomst. Ja, tegen de wind, zoeken naar de juiste versnelling de en wist je hoeveel je voorsprong was? Um, ja, ik had, uh, ik had wat miserie met, met mijn oortje en um, uh, ik wist eigenlijk nooit uh, hoeveel voorsprong dat, dat ik had en uh, moest constant vragen aan de, aan de motards eigenlijk uh, hoeveel voorsprong dat, dat ik had en, en dan naar uh, de Bosberg was gewoon uh, alles geen tot aan de hand. Ik probeer het dus laatste vraagje, hoe uh, voel je je? Je hebt de ronde van Vlaanderen really Het zal misschien wel een goede kans krijgen. Soms zeggen woorden veel minder dan een beeld.